Glory to the or God, a glory to the Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from our every stain and save our souls a good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever to ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord. Cleanse us from our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever to ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Brethren in Christ, Jesus is King. Welcome back to Preparation for the Holy Sacrifice on the Meaning of Catholic, which is where we discuss the Gospels for three different rites of the Catholic Church. There are 24 different Catholic churches within the Catholic Church. There are more than 24 rites. And today I'm wearing my Michigan sweatshirt because it's a great day to be a Michigander. And we're going to talk about why that is, why I'm excited about being a Michigander today. Um, but this is this is the show where our guild community, that we can together, we can give thanks for the providence of God and his governance over the world. In other words, we're talking about the news, whatever is new and controversial we're going through it together as a guild community. This is our international community against the Marxists, meaning if Catholic. And if you want the full show, you need to chip in something to help the lay apostolate. Offer up prayers every day to our lay patrons to help this apostolate, whose mission is to unite Catholics against the enemies of Holy Church. So this is a preview. Subscribe to Patreon of the Guild in the notes below to access the whole show. So first of all, we just want to promote, please donate to Leo's emergency fund. They've fallen on hard times and they're facing homelessness. So please just chip in something. We're currently at 68% of the money that needs to be raised for them. Uh, so please chip in something, you, whatever you can. Uh, he is our guild member and this is a guild. This is this is meant to support fellow Catholics economically, internationally against the Marxists. And so please chip in whatever you can, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars, 50, 100 dollars, whatever you can. Please chip in, uh, help help Leo and his family out and click the link below for that. What are we going to be talking about in the show? Well, we've got some hot topics today. Uh, as I said, we'll talk about why Michigan is awesome. We're going to talk talk about hunting a little bit. I'll read this, read from this in a minute from Sebastian Morello's piece recently in the European Conservative. Uh, but we also upcoming, we have a new series on Zionism. This is the, the most popular guild only series we have. And it is called Jews, Judaism, and Israel, History of a People. It currently has over 18 hours of content delving into this topic, including all of the buzzwords that I'm not able to say on YouTube, 
Uh, the only time I've ever gotten a strike on YouTube was when we dealt in delved into some of these topics into the deep, deep waters thereof. Uh, but we have a new series coming up on Zionism, and this is going to go much deeper into this particular topic of Jews Judaism as in Israel as it regards the 19th and 20th century. Because obviously those these are the centuries, the modern period that we're dealing with, where it really becomes very acute. And I just finished the first interview last Friday. I was very excited by our guest. Uh, very, very uh, powerful and uh, erudite scholar presenting a very controversial view that uh, I know many viewers will find very controversial. But this is a pressing topic. And we want to look at this with the eyes of faith and reason. But it's a very emotional topic. And easily misunderstood and that's why we deal with it as a guild community so if you want the full series meaning of catholic.com slash register to access the guild content guild members you can log into the website and it's at meaning of catholic.com slash the dash jewish dash question so it's the jewish question you can access all those 18 hours of content including the newest installments of that under zionism so that's what we'll be talking about Israel. We're going to eventually have opposing viewpoints on the modern state of Israel, opposing Catholic viewpoints. We're going to get Israeli viewpoints. We're going to get Palestinian viewpoints. We're going to get um, Catholics on all sides of this question and why it's so important uh, as we enter into a new administration in these United States, because obviously the American empire has a huge role to play in geopolitics in Israel. So, that's what's coming up uh, on the topic today. We're talking about the canonization of non-Catholics. There's been recent Oriental and Syriac saints added to the Roman martyrology. And there's an interesting comment here from Gary Goulagrange on this topic that we're going to read from this text on divine revelation translated by my friend Matthew Minard. And then we'll talk a little bit about the new Mayan rite and uh, a little bit about that. And we'll have an interesting comment here from Archbishop Lefebvre on that, because he obviously was in the African bush for decades. And he has actually some surprising comments that you that you might be surprised by when you read about what he talks about when he talks about dancing, liturgical dancing. He talks about African drumming and that sort of thing. So we're going to look at that as well and discuss it as regards the latest news out of the Vatican. And then uh, we're, we've got a lot of other things to go through. We've There's some interesting things coming out of the federal government and the American empire. Um, we've got some of the comments from D Dr. E. Michael Jones. We've got uh, health care versus sick care. Why I'm not a fan of Austrian economics. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I know that's an area of controversy. We'll talk a little bit about conspiracy theories versus the conspiracy of antichrist and making uh, what I, in my opinion, is an important distinction between the two. We'll talk about this, these two different terms, Judeo-Christian and Judeo-Masonic, which I think are both important to understand and uh, understand their use and misuse. And then we'll talk about a recent podcast from the Two Cities podcast, my friend Theo Howard and my new friend, Will Tucker, uh, had a very penetrated analysis of uh, political discourse. Uh, it was about the political kayfabe. You can go and watch that podcast yourself. And uh, some of the guild comments and questions, uh, the the new, the, the patroness of these United States um, is the Immaculate Conception. Also, I believe the patroness of many other countries as well. So um, obviously we are an international guild community. We have Aussies and Kiwis and Filipinos and Canadians and um, people around the world. So, but obviously the American empire and the American traditionalist movement has a lot of influence all over the place, but, uh, the FSSP is everywhere, uh, especially France, uh, and the United States. Um, and we had a question about the Immaculate Conception in these United States. Another guild question about hippie Jesus. And also an important question is secular music shamanism talking about secular music. So, with that, let's talk about, uh, first, I want to give you a preview of what we're going to talk about, which is hunting. And uh, 
I'll tell why I'm wearing my Michigan shirt today and the guild stream. But I just want to make sure everybody, if you haven't subscribed to this, it's a great uh, quarterly journal, the European conservative. Um, my Again, my friend Theo Howard has written for it. And, and his friend, Sebastian Morello, is the editor. Sebastian Morello recently took a trip to South Africa, and he's discussing the European influence on Af South Africa. And he has some comments on um, the importance of a, a truly Catholic conservatism or conservationism of the natural world. And this is something that Michiganders, we are very zealous about. And it's unfortunate that the, the environmentalism movement has become so pagan, basically, because there is extremely an extremely conservative conservationism in the, this state of Michigan that I live in. And uh, so th this is, I think, an important aspect to this. And we'll talk about that. Um, so tomorrow is the sixth resumed Sunday after Epiphany in the ancient Roman rite. That is the Latin mass. And the gospel is the parable of the mustard seed. We talked about last week how there's in these two times in the spring and in the late autumn, as we are, we have the Sundays of the Epiphany, which both coincide with the planting season both in the Northern Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere. And so we have the parable of the mustard seed, and it talks about the great tree. The, the mustard seed grows into a great tree upon which the birds, uh, the birds perch. And the listeners of our Lord would have recalled the prophecy of Daniel. And this is a critical story in the prophecy of Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar has another dream and it's about this great tree and how the tree gets chopped down. So the tree has birds perching on it, and birds in the scriptures are symbols of the angels. But we see in this case that the birds perching on Nebuchadnezzar's tree, his empire, are really the fallen angels that are, of course, they're, uh, you know, this conspiracy pulling the strings behind the scenes. And so this, and then in Daniel's vision, the tree is cut down, and this is when Nebuchadnezzar is humbled, and he he confesses the uh, the dominion of the true God of Israel. So it's a, a huge moment in the prophecy of Daniel, and so the listeners of our Lord would have understood immediately what the political message was, the political undercurrent here, because obviously we have, we talked about the book of Daniel in a previous stream with Dr. John Bergsman, all the Jews of our Lord's day knew that the Messiah was imminent because Daniel had given the chronology and he had given those four beasts, the four beasts. And so the Jews knew that there was Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom and the Perdo mesian kingdom and then the Greek empire and then the Roman empire. So they knew they were in the period of the fourth beast at the time of our Lord. And our Lord says the kingdom of God is a mustard seed, which grows into a great tree. So the Lord is prophesying the conquering of the Roman Empire. It's a it's just a huge political message that you, you don't understand unless you know the undercurrent of Daniel. And it's such a powerful message because, as I wrote in my book, there are two great empires at the time of our Lord. There is not only the Roman Empire, but there's also to the east, the Persian Empire. And the Roman Emperor called himself the Son of God. The Persian Empire, Emperor called himself the King of Kings. And so we have the true son of God and the true king of kings who comes to power. And he says, my kingdom is a mustard seed. And as I write in my book, what is the mustard seed of the kingdom? It is the, the Catholic family. And not in the sense of the nuclear family, which is a corruption created by the Industrial Revolution. It's the patriarchal extended family. And we see this in the book of Acts when he was converted in all his household. That means his whole, it means uh, his, obviously his wife, his children, his all his sons and their children, his unmarried daughters, all his slaves, servants, employees, this whole household. This is the mustard seed of the kingdom. That is what our Lord plants against all the professional armies of these massive empires. And we see that this mustard seed is indeed what conquers the great tree of the fourth beast, which is the Roman Empire. And so we can take hope, especially I'm just um, presenting a lecture in the book of Revelation to my high schoolers in my high school class. 
and how the book of Revelation shows this so powerfully. He, the book of Revelation shows that mustard seed conquering. And if you want, you can read my book, um, City of God versus City of Man. This is where we talk all about how that mustard seed does indeed conquer by means of the family. And uh, so it's, it's a very exciting and powerful message in the gospel for the ancient Roman rite, the Latin mass. So tomorrow is also the 26th Dominica post Pentecostan, the Sunday after Pentecost, 26th. And that is because I got to plug in my computer again now. Um, we'll see if, see if I have a huge technical difficulty because I got my computer, my, my, um, I suppose you keep my, keep my computer going. So 26 Sunday after Pentecost in the Greek, right? The so-called Byzantine, right? And it's the nativity fast. And in the Byzantine, right? The nativity fast is the color red. This is an interesting thing to Latins because for us, we don't have any red unless it's a martyr or Pentecost and this is the the advent fast the advent season of advent is obviously purple so here's an here's a here's a picture of the red vestments on here um and so this is what it looks like this is what the our our byzantine catholic brethren have now so the the red vestments will continue all the way to christmas during the nativity fast the nativity fast already oh, aka saint philip's fast it already began last week and uh for latins we have various customs for the advent fast we also have saint martin's lent which begins on november 12th last week and if you want to join us for fasting you can go to meaningofcatholic.com register join our guild and join our lay sodality the the fellowship of saint anthony that's where we offer up fasting for uh, se priests and seminarians, and that is our effort to contribute something positive as lay people. So the the gospel, so the gospels, even though the Byzantine rite is entering the nativity fast, the gospel continues that same post Pentecost cycle, which is go moving through the gospels in a continuous lectionary. As we discussed previously, how the Novus Ordo of the Roman rite does have a very traditional aspect to its lectionary, which is that continuation of the, the, the readings. That's very traditional, uh, going all the way back to the Sabbath reading of the Torah. And so it's very traditional to read through the entire book. Um, but the most traditional aspect would be to read the entire book in one sitting. That would be, if you want to go super trad, read the entire Gospel of St. Luke in one sitting out loud to a congregation that would be the most traditional method but so we have the gospel of saint luke and the God, saint luke's gospel is very acute for its economic rebuking of the rich and and various economic injustices and this is what makes it very potent uh regarding catholic social teaching and the gospel is the i will tear down my barns uh, and it's about a man who has surplus and he wants to build bigger barns to have more wealth so that he can relax. And this goes into modern economic social questions because we've talked about retirement. We've talked about this in the lay apostolate series. We talked about the 401k investing the stock market. And it does not appear, at least to me, does not appear to me that the modern met in, in the United States and other countries, the modern practice of retirement. That does not seem to be a Catholic thing. It, it does not seem to be a, a good thing to do. Uh, it does not seem to be a traditionally Catholic thing to do. Uh, it, it, it appears that rather in a patriarchal extended family, what you do when you're old is that you just slow down your working. You do less work because you just can't do as much work. And eventually, when you can't work at all, your children take care of you because they're living in your house with you. And whereas in the gospel for the 26th Sunday after Pentecost and Byzantine, right, the man is rich, so he just wants to take it easy. And this seems to be a condemnation of the modern concepts of retirement right here. Um, and uh, But the, the main 
problem is is the fourth commandment really honor thy father and mother is that the modern retirement uh practice of saving up a bunch of money so that you can retire and take it easy and then your your children don't have to take care of you seems to just negate that fourth commandment the aspect of that which comes into play much later in your parents life so an important aspect of the 26th sunday after pentecost now in the the new rite of mass the new rite of paul the sixth it is the 33rd dominica tempus per annum and it is completing this eschatological vision of the end times now there's an eschatological element to the latin mass which took place in the previous sunday but especially in in both the both of the the rites of the roman rite the new and the old the final sunday of after pentecost time is eschatological on the one hand you have christ the king sunday in the new rite which is an eschatological kingship in contrast to the previous christ the king sunday which is in october which talks about catholic social teaching this is talking about this world and this time and in the last sunday after pentecost which we'll talk about last next week we have another eschatological vision so but this 33rd dominica tempest per annum in the new rite of paul the sixth is completing the cycle b of the three cycle lectionary continua going through saint mark's gospel so it's completing an eschatological vision and it enters into the eschatological discourse of St. Mark. There are three eschatological discourses in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Our Lord gives an eschatological discourse, which have a, has a double nature. On the one hand, it prophesies the destruction of Jerusalem, because as our Lord said, and the Talmud confirms, in fact, the non-Christian Jews confirm this, that the temple was destroyed in 70 AD because their their uh, perdured hatred without a cause. This is the psalm that is quoted in the Talmud to explain why the destruction of the second temple happened. And this is exactly the psalm that our Lord quotes in the Gospel of St. John. And in the Synoptics, he predicts the destruction of the temple. And in St. John's Gospel, there's no eschatological discourse. The eschatological discourse come takes place in Revelation. So Revelation takes the place of that eschatological discourse. So our Lord prophesies the end of uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple. And at the same time, he is also prophesying the end of times at the same time. So it's a double meaning. And that's why he says this generation will not pass away until all these things come about, which has a double meaning. It, on the one hand, it means this literal generation, because from 33 AD to 70 AD, that's the, that's the time of a generation at that time, 40 years. But he also can mean this generation, this race, this nation, i.e. the nation of the Jews, the nation of Israel, will not, will also endure all the way to the end of time. And this also recalls, again, the ap apocalyptic prophetic work of the prophecy of Daniel. And uh, because it, this and this Sunday and in, in, in Dominica Tempus Baranum actually quotes from Daniel to begin with the first reading. Because the first reading always coincides with the, with the gospel. So in the first reading, we have the prophecy of Daniel. And it also includes a resurrection of the body. And this is one of the, one of the controversies that our Lord weighs in on between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Because the Pharisees had the book of Daniel. And they had what's known as the oral Torah. So they believed in the resurrection of the body. Whereas the Sadducees did not. But this is contained in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is so critical. And especially when you look, I was just, as I said, I was preparing for my, my lecture on the book of Revelation and how much the Revelation is so dependent on Daniel. Because the, the key moment in Revelation is that the, sealed, the seal, uh, the book of the seal is broken open. And that's because in Daniel, the whole apocalyptic vision in Daniel the, the the vision says seal seal the book do not let it be opened and then he provides this chronology for the messiah and the four beasts and then in the book of revelation that same seal from daniel is finally opened by the lamb who was slain who was and who is and who is to come and what do we have in that seal but 
the destruction of Jerusalem in the most apocalyptic and, and powerful vision, which prophesies to the early church and prophesies to the whole history of the church. And finally, to the end times of the church. And so this vision is critical. And finally, uh, before we close out, um, we just want to mention this guild stream because we've talked so much about the big book of Revelation and it's very unfortunate that we uh, th this book is so neglected. Uh, but here, here's the guild stream right here. Uh, so guild members, you can go to this. This gets emailed to you every time you join the guild. Uh, but the book of Revelation, this conspiracy of Antichrist, where we really start to unpack the book of Revelation and its importance. So you can access that content on the guild only master list. And um, if you're a guild member, you can access that. So with that, let's go into our guild only portion. Uh, once again, if you want to be a part of the guild, meaningofcatholic.com slash register. So we'll be back in just a few minutes to talk about all the rest of the topics. Mm -hmm.